Module 4, Psychological Perspective, The Human Self and the I. The psychology of the self focuses on the representation of an individual based on his or her experiences are either from home, school, and other groups, organizations, or affiliations. He or she engaged in seemingly the self is the one of the most heavily research areas in social and personality psychology where the concepts are introduced that beyond our physical attributes lies our psychological identity questions of who i am or what am i beyond my looks are thoughts of many that continuously research for a deeper sense of search which can be traced back from some time of human history. From the ancient to the current times, the concept of the self is an interesting subject for many as it's very personal that talks about interpersonal properties. In Oxford Bibliographies, Kamitz mentioned that whatever stands one adopts regarding the self's ontological status, there is a little doubt that the many phenomena of which the self is a predicate self-knowledge, self-awareness, self-esteem, self-enhancement, self-regulation, self-deception, self-presentation, to name just a few are indispensable research areas. Cognitive consumption. This approach will assist individuals in assimilating new information to their existing knowledge and will enable to make the appropriate modification to their existing intellectual framework to accommodate their new information. Horney believed develop a number of strategies to cope with basic anxiety because people feel in superior an idealized self-image and imaginary picture of the self as the processor of unlimited powers and superlative qualities is developed. On the other hand, the actual self, the person one is everyday life, is often displaced because it fails to fulfill the requirement of the idealized image. Carl Rogers, with his person-centered theory, established a conception of self involving the real self and the ideal self. The real self includes all these aspects of one being and one's experiences that are perceived in awareness by the individual self revolves over time. This is what our parents have taught us considering that we admire in others what society promotes, what we think are in our best interest. Multiple versus unified selves. Multiple selves, according to K. Jurgen, are the capacities we carry with us from multiple relationships. These are not discovered but created in our relationship with other people. Unified selves, as strongly pointed out in traditional psychology, emphasizes that well-being comes when our personality dynamics are congruent, cohesive, and consistent. True versus false selves. Donald W. Winnicott distinguished that he called true self from the false self in the human personality, considering the true self as based on a sense of being and the experiencing body the false self as a necessary defensive organization, a survival, a caretaker self, the means by which threatened person has managed to survive. Healthy false self is functional and can be compliant but without the feeling that it has betrayed its true self. The unhealthy false self fits in but through a feeling or forced compliance rather than Loving adaptation. False selves, as in investigated by Hans Kohut, can lead towards 
narcissistic personality which identifies with external factors at the cost of one's own autonomous creativity. Self as proactive and agentic. Social cognitive theory takes an agentic view of personality, meaning that humans have the capacity to exercise control over their own lives. People are self-regulating, proactive, self-reflective, and self-organizing, and that they have the power to influence their own environment in a manner that permits growth towards psychological health. Agent self is known as the executive function that allows for action. This is how individuals make choices and utilize our control in situations and actions. Self-efficacy lies in the center of Bandura's social cognitive theory.